All right. So once again, welcome to Getting to Know EU Clubs and Activities. My name is Chris Binder, first year admission counselor here at Elmhurst, um, recent graduate of Elmhurst too. So I'm pretty excited to be talking about the student experience and about what clubs I was involved in and my time in Elmhurst. Also have two uh, very special guests, two Elmhurst All-Stars with me tonight. Uh, current students, I have uh, Josh and Hiba, who are going to be joining us to talk more about their experiences and their involvement um, in their time here at Elmhurst. So uh, Josh and Hiba, if you two want to introduce yourselves and share a little bit about um, yourselves, go ahead. Hiba, you can go ahead first. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, hi, I am Hiba. I am a current junior on campus. I'm majoring in special education. Um, so I'm super excited. I'm finally like in major and going to practicum and going to schools and stuff. So that's super exciting. Um, involvement on campus. I am like a nerd when it comes to involvement. I love doing a little bit of everything. So um, this year I am president for Student Government Association. So I'm super, super happy and excited about that. Um, I'm the vice president for Union Board. So Union Board is our programming board on campus. So all the student um, led events on campus, all the fun orientation stuff. Um, well, some of the some fun orientation stuff, not all, but some of the fun orientation stuff, all of that um, Union Board does. I am um, a student ambassador, so I give tours whenever needed. So that is also a thing. Um, I work really close with our ELSA program. So it's um, a program for students with learning disabilities on campus. So um, I work as a community advisor, which is um, in the residence halls. It's kind of like an RA, but it's for students with disabilities and we can get more into that later. Um, and then I work as a teaching assistant in that department, a life coach, all those little things. Um, and then I'm also a general member of Muslim Student Association. So yeah, I think I hit them all, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Hi everyone, I'm Josh Quintos. I am actually a senior now. I am majoring in business admin. I got my CS minor, so I'm really happy about that. Um, I am the chapter president of my fraternity, Alpha Sigma Phi. I previously served on the governing board of all fraternities, inner fraternity council. I've held a couple positions on there. I also am a general member of craft clubs and software, software engineering club. And I also participate with um, Latino Student Association, Asian, Amer Asian Club of Elmhurst, and I help out with um, Habitat for Humanity. So I'm pretty, pretty involved on campus, but I really like to focus on the Greek life aspects of that. I've been, a, I've been in Greek life since a sophomore and now as a senior, I'm wrapping it up. Cool. Thank you both for uh, for sharing. Uh, as you all can see, right, super involved students, they're able to, you know, handle not only academics, but uh, get involved. And that's kind of, that's what I really want to hit home with everybody today is just the opportunities are endless at Elmhurst to get involved and get so many different experiences that are going to make you super well-rounded. And when it comes time for graduation, uh, and you're looking for jobs or different, you know, graduate programs, you're going to have so many really fun experiences that had so many great transferable skills that will show up in these interviews that will help you be a great candidate for any job and any any future uh, endeavor that you may find yourself on. So without further ado, let's get rolling here on clubs and activities. So some learning outcomes for tonight, what we're going to be focusing on, right? So we're going to learn about the different opportunities to get involved. Uh, you've already heard about some of the ways Josh and Hibba have been involved, uh, but we're going to learn more about just all the different uh, opportunities under the sun. You will have a better understanding of what student life looks like at Elmhurst. So hopefully you all will be able to kind of have a good idea of what it's like to be a current student, because um, I know it's hard as a prospective student to imagine or see it. So tonight's going to hopefully give you some more clarity in that. Uh, we're also going to learn how to start your own club. So while we offer over 100 clubs to get involved in at Elmhurst, uh, we are still creating new clubs pretty much every single year. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that process, what that looks like, um, and how to go about starting your own club. And then also we are going to take a look at Blue Jay Life. Um, Blue Jay Life is kind of like our one-stop shop for everything club and organization-based. Uh, it's a virtual platform that students can utilize 
to um, to organize their clubs and figure out what events are going on on campus um, every single day. So those are our outcomes for tonight. All right. So uh, getting involved, right? So at the beginning of each term, there is going to be a student activities fair uh, that is going to be called the Taste of Elmhurst. So this is a time when every single club on campus will have a table out either on the mall, which is our big grassy area on campus, or in our Founders Lounge, uh, and they will advertise their clubs. And uh, new students, you know, returning students, all students are welcome to uh, come to the Taste of Elmhurst. It is free, and they can learn about all the different clubs and opportunities and ways to get involved. So uh, here are just kind of lists of some general umbrellas of areas that we offer um, clubs and organizations. So there's honor societies, Greek life, uh, there's different religious-based clubs. We have some affinity groups and different culture-based clubs. So I am going to pull up on our website this link, which is very helpful. I think you all can check it out when you have some free time, but it's going to be a link to our clubs page. Um, let me just get this going. All right, so this page is going to show you all the different clubs and orgs that we have to get involved. There is a link to Blue Jay Life, which we will talk about later. Um, but here are some of your academic and professional clubs, um, Mock Trial, there's, uh, you know, the World Language Club. Here are some of those cultural based groups. Here are all of the different sororities and fraternities that we offer on campus that we also have some service based fraternities and um, some traditionally um, Latinx and um, Black fraternities and sororities. Uh, there are also uh, these different honor societies specific to uh, different majors. So if your major falls into you know, these categories, your respected area, that is the honor society you're able to join. Um, so I was a member of the Psy Chi National Honor Society because I was a psychology major. Uh, and then there are some different recognition societies, different leadership opportunities, HIBA mentioned union board, student government association, and then different performing arts groups. So now keep in mind, all of our performing arts groups are non-major specific. So if you come to Elmhurst and you, you know, play an instrument, and let's say you were in the concert band back in your high school, uh, but you want to be a business major or you want to be a psychology major, you can still audition and be involved in the band as a business major. So they're open to students of all different majors and areas. We also have some really cool publication and media clubs. Um, so the leader and WRFE is our radio station. Uh, the leader is our, our school newspaper. So there are opportunities for you to, you know, be a writer for the leader, to be a journalist, to um, be a columnist. Uh, on the radio station, you can have your own radio show, you know, and play your own music and do talk radio. Uh, so for, you know, those of you who may be communication majors or thinking about going into, you know, uh, digital media, this is a really cool way that you can get that experience firsthand, you know, in a club on campus. Uh, and we have the, you know, we have a station on campus that you can broadcast from and the leader has their own office space on campus. So uh, that's a really cool, unique opportunity. Some different religious organizations, um, which is great. Uh, our approach to religion is we're open to all faiths, little faith, no faith, no matter where you're at on your faith journey, uh, you're welcome at Elmhurst. And there are ways for you to get involved as much as you'd like with exploring different uh, religious opportunities. So on top of that, there are service groups and different social action clubs. Uh, green Jays has gotten pretty big lately. Uh, they're all about uh, making campus more green and promoting uh, reduce, reuse, recycle on campus, which is super cool. They've done a lot of advocate advocacy um, for our campus, which is awesome. Uh, and then just some more unique special interest clubs, craft club. Uh, Esports is getting really big. Uh, it's growing a ton. They have a super cool lab. Uh, my colleague, George Martinez, he is the advisor for that club. So uh, they do a fantastic job. But Josh, why don't you go ahead and share with, um, you know, the students a little bit more about what Greek life is and maybe how a student goes about like getting involved with Greek life. Yeah, of course. So Greek life is under the sorority and fraternity life umbrella. We are, um, our advisor is Amanda Santucci. She's a wonderful lady in the student activities office. So just to break it down, just because they list everyone all together, 
We have uh, three active social fraternities on campus, Alpha Sigma Phi, Alpha Tau Omega, Lambda Chi Alpha. We're all governed by the same council. And then we have two multicultural fraternities, Alpha Phi Alpha, a historically black fraternity, and Sigma Lambda Beta, a historically Latino fraternity. Um, and then we have four active Panhellenic sororities, Alpha Phi, Kappa Kappa Gamma, Phi Mu, Sigma Kappa. They're all part of the same council. And then we also have a historically Latina sorority, Sigma Lambda Gamma. So pretty much, um, recruitment is pretty much a period in the beginning of the semester. So you can actually sign up beforehand. I know sororities have a, um, a online form that's released before the school starts and they uh, table it and they'll advertise it during the spring and fall in, um, involvement fair. So that's pretty good. So Panhellenic recruitment is for the four sororities that I previously mentioned. They all participate in a formal recruitment in the fall. So that's pretty much a three day jam packed event of you visiting every sorority, having specific events and then doing a preference system where you get matched up to a sorority that feels like home to you. So it's really great. And then sororities also do something called COB or continuous open bidding in the spring where it's pretty much they have their own week of events and you can visit individual sororities. Um, I highly recommend doing formal just, just so you can meet every sorority, meet as many as sisters as possible. And then for fraternities, um, we are under IFC. So that's Alpha Sig the three I've previously, previously mentioned, Alpha Sigma Phi, ATO, and Lambda Chi Alpha. We also have a week. It's usually the week before, a week after Panhellenic recruitment. This all happens usually in the first month. So uh, September or uh, early September, mid-September. And we work off a similar system, but it's a little bit more um, um, free for um, male students. So male students are able to go to any um, event that they want to. They don't have to sign up on any form or anything. And then they pretty much meet all the guys that they want to. They can go to specific fraternity events. And at the end of the event, there's bid day where you pretty much will get an extension of uh, the brotherhood. Um, and then sororities do something similar, I think on the Sunday where they get an extension of the sisterhood. So it's pretty fun. And then um, Alpha Phi Alpha and Sigma Lambda Beta actually have their own separate recruitment processes. But we actually um, advertise them along with IFC because we want everyone to give a fair shot at every fraternity. Um, their week usually coincides around IFC week. It's usually the week after, week before. But um, don't worry, because we always advertise both. We want students to try out as many fraternities as possible. And then Sigma, Ga uh, Sigma Lambda Gamma also does something similar to Sigma Lambda Beta, where they um, have their events a week before or a week after Panhellenic recruitment. And then we also have an informal week um, in the spring for fraternities as well. And yeah, that's pretty much how recruitment goes. Um, if you have any questions about the process, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to Amanda Santucci. She's very wonderful and very open to any questions. Cool, Josh, thanks. Um, what would you say, uh, like what are some fun events that you know different Greek life organizations will do throughout the year? Yeah, so I think that's great. So we, um, at the end of the year, we pretty much each separate organization, we all have something called the formal. That's pretty much a prom where we all dress up, we bring our dates, we rent out a banquet hall. Um, sometimes it's overnight, so we do get a hotel as well. So it's super fun. That's um, usually all inclusive with the dues that we pay. So it's super nice. You can bring anyone along. And then sometimes we also have mixers and functions where we partner up with a sorority or fraternity where we go bowling, we rent out a restaurant, so it's super cool. And then specific events, we're also big on philanthropy. So I know for ourselves, we do something called Pia Sig, where we pretty much raise money for one of our philanthropies, Rain. And for every $3, you could throw a pie in our face. Um, we also used to do a 3v3 basketball game. Um, we also did um, flag football. I know um, Sigma Kappa actually has one this week. It's to raise money for um, um, Alzheimer's research. It's called... Um, Pro Jam, and it's actually a really cool lip syncing contest. Anyone could participate. It's super huge. And there's just so many cool stuff. A lot of our events are focused on philanthropy just because um, we have a, it's, it's big here. And every unique organization has their own unique set of philanthropy. So there's always yearly annual events that we do. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So that's a little bit about Greek life um, and just kind of that that way to get involved. Uh, so we are going to keep rolling here. We will have uh, time at the end for questions too. If you all have specific questions about any clubs that you saw there on that page, uh, or want to ask, you know, myself, Josh or Hibba, questions about the clubs that we're in. So I'm going to bring the presentation back here. I do want to touch real quick on the different affinity groups on campus, because I think they're super important. Uh, so we have 
three affinity spaces to my understanding. Um, you all can correct me if I'm wrong, but we have uh, affinity groups, which are essentially groups for people who identify as a part of a certain uh, identity or culture. So the three we have are men of distinction, which is for men of color. So if you identify as a man of color, we have circle of sisterhood for women of color. And then we have the prism network for members of the LGBTQ plus community. So uh, these groups were established, I would say like two or three years ago. Um, and they're a really great space for uh, people who identify as a part of that group to come together and talk about your different lived experiences, talk about, you know, maybe some things that uh, you've gone through or just your different experiences on campus and off campus and just in life in general uh, to kind of find community amongst um, people who identify with the same identity as you. So um, this is just a great way to, you know, talk about everything under the sun that you may be going through and a great way to meet more people um, who share some, some similar maybe values and cultural um, ideas as you. So um, yes, those are our affinity groups. We're going to keep moving. Uh, we're going to talk about a day in the life of a student. So um, maybe what it kind of looks like to go to class, have your different clubs. So uh, both of these students are super, super busy all the time. Um, so Hiba, would you just share a little bit with us about what it looks like to, you know, be a student at Elmerson, what your typical day looks like? Yes. Okay. So I'll talk about this year and then I'll flash back to freshman year because I feel like that'll be helpful. So since I'm in my major this year, it's kind of a little um, less jam packed, I would say. So I have classes for this semester, I have classes Tuesdays and Thursdays all day. Um, and then Mondays and Wednesdays, I go to work. So I work on campus. So there are like endless opportunities to work on campus, which is a student ambassador job, which we'll talk about later. Um, but so I go to work on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, Fridays, I go to my practicum. So I'm off campus. My personal meetings fall in Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are unique because there is an hour blocked off in that day called protected hour. Um, so it goes from 1145 to 1245, where no class is running at that time. Um, not to say that you might not have a study group or something to do um, other than that, but like your class physically will not be scheduled for that time. So it's a good break in that in those two days to go get lunch, join a club. Um, most meetings happen during that hour. So for me specifically, Tuesdays during protected hour is union board and Thursdays during protected hour is um, student government association. So that's kind of how my busier days go. Class, meeting, class, then I do homework, um, then I'll go hang out in Founders Lounge. There's always something going on in the afternoon in Founders Lounge. So you kind of get to like be involved and then also like have your downtime kind of at the same time kind of thing. So it's like kind of fun. Um, and then come back to my room and do it all over again the next day. Freshman year, if I'm going to flash back a little bit, um, the first semester, I would say I was definitely still kind of getting into the groove of how, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes work, you know, that Tuesday, Thursday kind of break. There's a lot that goes on the first couple of weeks of school. So you're kind of like, oh, my God, I want to join everything. And then you're like, oh, my God, I can't join everything. Um, so I would definitely say to, like, use those two weeks as, like, kind of figuring out what you really, really want to do um, and, like, trying a little bit of all of it before they get, like, their schedule set for the whole year. Um, because some organizations might meet, you know, on Tuesdays and some might meet on like a Wednesday night. And so it's like kind of interesting to see how you can schedule that out. For me specifically, I chose to join two organizations when I was a freshman. So um, that's when I started Union Board and SGA. And it would be that I would have class um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays was like SGA, Union Board, getting involved time, if that kind of makes sense. Thanks, when they're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. So um, these are things, right, that you can kind of ease into totally, just like Hibbe did. So as she kind of found more interest on campus um, and learned about different opportunities, you know, she began to, to realize what she can handle, what she couldn't handle, um, if she wanted to try something new, you know, no club or activity is something you have to do every single year. 
Um, so you really have the autonomy to pick and choose what it is you want to do, what it is you want to try every single year. So uh, more to come about uh, what uh, some of those things are that Hibba was mentioning she's involved in. But before we do that, um, so let's say, you know, we were going through the clubs list and you saw, you know, a bunch of clubs, but you're thinking, man, like I'm in this club at my school right now that is really cool, but you don't have it at Elmhurst. So what do I do? Um, I'll use, you know, a recent example, a student that I worked with last year, who's now a current student at Elmhurst who transferred in, uh, he wanted to start a club uh, for uh, around the idea of music production. So his goal is to help you know, Elmhurst students who are young artists, right, that want to, that are writing music or producing music, he wants to help them put their music out there into the world. That's all he wants to do. So whether that be, you know, producing, writing, creating cover art for different albums or EP covers, um, the whole music business uh, aspect, he wants to create a club that will help Elmhurst students do this. Um, so he went through this process that Hib is going to tell us about and uh, I'm actually the advisor for his club, which is super cool. So I get to work with him and help him uh, kind of help his dreams and ideas come to fruition. Uh, but it's officially a club and it's on Blue Jay Life, which we'll, you know, check it out later. But Hiba, how does a person go about starting their own club at Elmhurst? Yeah, so um, something that I love about Elmhurst is that you can find your knit. Like if you don't see what you want, you can bring it to life. Like every student has their little niche on campus. So it's kind of exciting. Like all these new ideas come in. Um, the process is simple. Once we go on Blue Jay Life, we can show you specifically, but it's a little link with an application um, and you fill this application out on. So Blue Jay Life is an app on the Elmhurst portal that you'll look at once we get to that website. Um, and it's like super easy to navigate. It has like literally form, start a new organization application. And so um, you, look, you press it, you put in all the information about it. Um, and then it goes to policy committee, which is a subcommittee within Student Government Association. Um, to kind of give a little background about Student Government Association, we not only are representatives for the student body, but we oversee all the clubs and organizations on campus, um, student to student levels. So obviously you have your advisors um, who will help you like guide your thing, your um, organization in the right and club in the right direction, but then just making sure that um, you're getting like student experience and stuff that's what student government is also here for so the subcommittee policy committee will review it make sure that the only requirements are needed is that there are four other students who are interested in this club so let's say i wanted to start i don't know um we get so many interest okay i'll do the one that we got today i wanted to start a ping pong club um like table tennis and i was like super passionate about it and i was like hey, Chris, do you want to like join my ping pong club? And he was like, hey, that sounds like super cool. Like, yeah, totally. And then we had text Josh and we're like, hey, Josh, do you want to join our ping pong club? And he's like, yeah, that's awesome. Let's do it. And then we text on one of our other friends. I don't know. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. So now we have five members who are, you know, active and are like, hey, I really want to do this. Um, you know, this is like how I see it being productive on campus. Maybe we can outreach to these people. Um, it's something that someone can do like very easy go. It's not too much commitment, not too little commitment. So those are the kind of thoughts that you need to have while you're starting it. Um, you put it in a roster and like you find a faculty or staff member to be your advisor. Um, so just like Chris said, he is an advisor because he's a faculty member. I know he's a staff member, sorry, not faculty. <laughs> sorry. Um, and or if like one of your teachers is like, hey, that sounds so fun. I'll do it. People, anyone is always willing to be um, an advisor. They find these new ideas. So so that's like not a difficult part in the process. No part is difficult, but um, I know that's the one that gets a little more intimidating because you have to like reach out to someone and be like, hey, can you be my advisor? They love advising new clubs on campus. So um, even like your first year seminar teacher or something like that, they'll be like, yeah, sure. Um, and then you submit that application, go through policy committee, they will approve you based off of some questions like what do you choose to do with this club how do you see it moving forward the last step is that you present your organization or club to the full student government um, association board and we do one big approval or deny 
Um, so yeah, it's a super, super easy process. Um, it gets done in about a week would be like um, the longest it would take to get done, depending on what, what time you can meet with us. But um, that's like, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. And Hiba, so let's say I start a club and I want to write, have events and do fun stuff, but that requires money. What do I do if I need money for my club? Yes, I was actually going to touch on this at Blue Jay Life. So um, we have this, so there are about eight organizations on campus that um, are budgeted. So the programming board, student government, those are budgeted organizations um, to help but then we have this one group that's called co-op. Um, it stands for something really long that I will never remember, no matter how long I've been on the board, but something cooperative funding, something like that. But ultimately it's kind of like a bank that um, students can go to if they have a student organization, a registered student organization on campus. Um, so let's say you get approved and you're like, hey, like I want to have a ping pong tournament with food and, you know, prizes. Um, there is another form on that Blue Jay Life portal that you can fill out being like, hey, I'm interested in having this event um, on this date. I need this much money. Um, this is the event details, stuff like that. There is another commit, there's a co-op committee consisting of four members that will then review your application and approve and deny that. So super, super simple to get it done. Um, Blue Jay Life and co-op do have some requirements such as you need to submit your proposals two weeks in advance. So anytime you wanna have an event on campus, you have to have it on Blue Jay Life, which is one of the best assets of Blue Jay Life because even if you're not the one hosting the event, you will know everything that's going on campus for the next month. Um, but you have to submit that two weeks in advance and you'd have to submit your finance proposal two weeks in advance. Um, so also a process that can get approved within three days, maximum a week, but it is a very fun thing that you can you know, get money and get the budget for it. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you, Hibba. Um, I think the cool thing is too, right? If you, you get to Elmhurst and you don't remember everything that Hibba just shared with you, there are older students, you know, like Josh and Hibba and their peers who have been involved in clubs for a really long time and maybe have started their own club who can definitely support you and give you help and answer any questions you might have about wanting to start your own club. Um, so people are there to help you along the way. But um, so now we can kind of go to Blue Jay Life and we, we've already been talking about it a little bit. So I'm just going to click on the link and we can browse through it. Um, I'm going to be honest, I did not use Blue Jay Life that much as a student. It always kind of scared me for some reason. Uh, I've learned now that it's super user friendly, which is, I'm like, man, I should have just, I should have just checked it out and not been scared. I mean, not gonna lie, you are kind of old now because you're like graduated and stuff and we kind of revamped the rules of Blue Jay Lives. So we kind of did make it better. You probably had it when it was like old and lame because I feel like Blue Jay, yeah, sorry. That just That's was like- That's probably true. You're, you're probably just old. I'm probably just old. Yeah, that's it. Oh man, so this is Blue Jay Life. Uh, so super easy to find. All you do is um, go. So once you become a student, you'll receive a portal. It'll be on this portal. You'll click on the Blue Jay Life icon, which will be with all your other icons. And then it will take you to this homepage. So uh, you can search for different events, organizations. Uh, as you can see, this is some cool events that we have coming up. Um, it looks like you know, ENC has a meeting, we have Special Olympics, uh, it gives you some latest news. So the PRISM network is up and running, which is super cool. Um, but if you go to the events tab, you can see even more events scheduled out. Obviously, we have a lot of Halloween stuff coming up, which is cool. Um, Josh has a chapter meeting Sunday the 31st. Uh, but yeah, uh, do either of you want to share a little bit more about how you use Blue Jay Life, maybe for your organizations? 
Yeah, I can go ahead. So we pretty much use Blue Jay Life to coordinate all our events. So um, as you can see, there's plenty of events on there. We actually just had most of our events passed, so they're no longer on there. But the great thing about Blue Jay Life is you can put everything. You can put donation links, a description, videos, locations, times, anything that you have questions for, you can find it there. And the great thing about it is it's open for every student. You're able to RSVP. You can contact us, ask us any questions. So I'm the one that makes most of the events of my organization. And then my event coordinator also does it. We also have a news bulletin board on um, Blue Jay Life, which is super cool. So I know for a while, um, we had a schol an annual scholarship that we give out to students. So we're able to um, post a news, uh, a news article about that. So uh, the recent news articles about the Prism Network. So you're able to look up stuff and you can contact um, organizations. So for example, let's say you're interested in Alpha Sigma Phi, you can click that contact or join button and we'll reply back to you pretty quickly. We'll tell you about the process and everything like that. Um, and then if you ever need co-op funding, you ever want to apply for a certain position that's a student leader position, I know IFC and Panhel has their applications. You can go to forums and you can rent stuff out. You can have things along like that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can look up events per specific organizations or you can look in the calendar view and then here's everything that you could um, look up. So we actually just went through co-op funding for a um, awareness event um, that we're having next month. And it was a pretty great process, pretty easy, like Hiba said. A lot of stuff has to be uh, proposed two weeks in event. They got back to us pretty quickly. So yeah, you can see there's so many things. You can be a mentor. You can um, ask for tables. You can ask for AV equipment, marketing requests. You can hang stuff up off the um, loft in the Frick Center. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty comprehensive. And then if you ever have questions, you could always ask um, Cheryl Leone, Amanda Santucci, and the COVID-19 Task Force. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you for sharing about Blue Jay Life. Appreciate that, Josh. So we will hop back over to the presentation. We are almost done. Let's see. Here we go. All right. So lastly, we're going to talk about um, some different student leadership opportunities. Um, some, you know, a lot of different ways to get involved that are, uh, they're a little bit more task oriented, I'd say. Um, a lot of them are going to be maybe paid positions uh, or positions where you can earn some sort of compensation. Uh, so it's a little bit different than a club. Uh, but these are, this is a list of some of the different student leadership opportunities uh, on campus that you can get involved in. Some of them do require you to uh, have been a student for uh, a semester or a year. Um, so for example, orientation student leader, right? So uh, being an OSL, you obviously have to be a student at Elmhurst first and go through the orientation process as a first year um, to then become an orientation student leader. So Josh is actually an OSL, right? No, but I live with all OSLs. That's right. Yeah, my, that's right. That's my, right. One of my fraternity brothers and closest friends is the coordinator, and my other roommate, Mason, is an OSL, constantly surrounded by a great group of people. Um, they can really shape your academic journey here. But yeah, you just need one year as a student here. Afterwards, you could apply. It's pretty fun. Yeah. So, um, yes. And uh, it's really cool because you get to kind of give back to the process that you maybe really enjoyed as a first year student. They do a lot of fun stuff. Um, so outside of being an OSO, there are some different uh, residential life experiences. So uh, three of the big ones are going to be community advisor, which Hiba mentioned, a resident advisor, and a head resident. Um, so I was a resident advisor my sophomore year, and then a head resident my junior and senior year. Uh, but all three of these positions are positions where you live on campus uh, in the residence halls. You have a role to um, kind of build community and provide safe spaces for the people living there. So you kind of serve as like a, a leader in the residence hall, somebody to go to. Um, so community advisors work specifically with the ELSA students um, and Hibble will talk a little bit about that, but the RAs work with all students in the building. Um, community advisors and resident advisors both uh, receive a really cool benefit of getting their room and board paid for. So you live on campus for free. You typically have your own room. So you have a single room and then you get your food paid for as well. So you receive the basic meal plan and that's all included in the role. So uh, there's an application process you'll go through. There's an interview process. Uh, and then there is room to move up within the resident advisor role. Uh, you can be 
become a head resident and oversee a building and a staff. So uh, I was in charge of West Hall my junior year and Dinkmeyer Hall my senior year. But the added perk with this role is that every head resident uh, receives their own individual apartment or room. And then they also get a $5,000 stipend. So uh, it's, it's a little bit more responsibility, I will say. Uh, it's more of like a uh, intense part-time job. But again, the skills you're going to learn, the ways that you're going to develop and grow as an individual are huge. Um, Hiba, do you want to talk a little bit about what your experience has been like being a community advisor? Yes, I was also going to say, I, I've never been a head resident and I'm not going to, but they also get their own parking spot reserved for them. So that's true. I've, I've seen, I've seen, you know, Chris be the only one who doesn't have to roam around like 12 times to find a parking spot. He just swoops right in. So um, that is an added perk, I will say. Um, so community advisor. So um, like I said, Elsa is Elmhurst Learning and Success Academy. It's a program on campus for students with disabilities who have um, finished high school. They're looking for a certificate in the college level. So, you know, they're not majoring in something specific. They're in college. They are college students. They get a certificate at the end. Um, but the only difference is their courses are different they take more life skills courses. So kind of like their four years here builds them up to prepare for independent life post schooling and like learning how to obtain a job and all those things um, despite the disability and you know just learning more independent life skills. So being an independent person, you have to live away from home. So what a community advisor does is that they oversee all the students who are part of that program, but living in the residence halls. Um, so, you know, we have a couple on every floor. They're spread throughout all the buildings. It's not like it's very inclusive on um, the campus, but we just serve as kind of extra support. Um, like Chris said, uh, RA looks at everyone in the building, but we are the extra, the CA is the extra support for students with disabilities. Um, so like, let's say they maybe aren't comfortable or, you know, they need an extra push on learning how to do laundry or need an extra push on learning how to do roommate resolution. That's where a CA comes in and kind of takes over that lead. Um, the training is similar, but also different. So we go through the same training as RAs, but we do get more, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one training with um, how to deal with like conflict resolution for students who may not be um, at the same level or intellectually or just like, you know, physically or any of that stuff. So um, it also does hold a lot of responsibility and like, you know, kind of just being an advocate for, you know, student, people with disabilities and all of that stuff. Um, but it's an awesome role and it really teaches you um, just how to create an inclusive environment because that also is an, a major part that I've learned throughout the two years I've done it is that, um, you know, because these students are all mingled in in every building, um, sometimes they don't want you to know that, they don't want other people to know, but you're teaching them how to be in this inclusive environment um, and just being, independent on their own without family and stuff. So it's an awesome learning experience for us and them. And it's super, super rewarding at the end. Thank you, Heba. Yeah. yeah. If you are somebody who's interested in working with, you know, students or just people in, you know, special education, or if you're going into maybe like counseling or psychology or social work, or even like business, Honestly, working with people with um, varying abilities and different learning disabilities is a really great opportunity. You get an Elmhurst that you don't get anywhere else. And having those transferable skills, I'm telling you, jobs are going to love that. And it's really going to make you a very well-rounded person. It's going to make you a great applicant. Um, and you, it's, it's fun. You, you learn so many different things. You learn about yourself. You learn about other people. Um, so it's a really cool, unique opportunity. Um, but uh, another uh, one I wanted to point out, another really great student leadership opportunity is uh, our student ambassadors. So a lot of uh, our students will um, apply to be student ambassadors and they work in our office of admission, which is awesome. So um, Josh and Hibba are both student ambassadors. Uh, they are veterans on our team and do a fantastic job. Um, so ambassadors are essentially tour guides. So they will tour students around campus. Maybe you've received a tour 
from, you know, one of our tour guides. Uh, I was a tour guide starting my freshman year um, all the way through my senior year. But um, Josh, do you want to share a little bit about what it's been like, you know, being a student ambassador and maybe what you've learned in your time of being an ambassador? Yeah, of course. I love student ambassador. It was a great way to make me become a little bit more approachable and definitely be able to talk to huge crowds of people. We are giving out tours every single day from, I think, 8, uh, 8 to 3.30 p.m. So it's super cool. We also participate in student panels. So what I love is I'm able to share my student experience, why I chose Elmhurst, why I love Elmhurst, and I'm able to uh, share that experience with students. And if any questions they have, any doubts, I'm more than happy to talk to them about them, um, make, them make them feel at home on campus, because ultimately this is our home. I feel very welcomed here. I love it here. And we do a lot of things around the office. Um, we um, help out with other presentations. I'm also an intern here, which is really great. Um, I started off just as an ambassador and through doing some um, side meetings with uh, one of our uh, counselors, I was able to get an internship here. So it's super cool. Um, and we work closely with um, the counselors as well. So we could do specific tours. So let's say if I'm giving a tour to a student who's a nursing major, uh, a prospective nursing major, we can take them to the, um, nursing building, Memorial Hall, and we could show them everything. We could, uh, we could tell them how to get in contact with like the program director, how to get in contact with professors. Um, we could show them all around campus and we can give them a student perspective because there's only so much that a flyer or a YouTube video or a webpage can do. It won't show you the human portion of campus, why we love it and stuff. Totally, yeah. Yeah, great stuff. Um, so if you're interested, you know, in being a student ambassador or, um, you know, you can apply after your first semester as a student at Elmhurst, uh, but it is a great way to get involved and it's a paid position, which is awesome. Um, we really take care of our student ambassadors. I'm the assistant student ambassador coordinator now, so I get to work with Josh and Hibba um, pretty much daily. You know, I see one of them, I feel like every, every day or every other day, which is super cool. So um, let me see if there's anything else here. Uh, the last thing I do want to touch on um, is just kind of like overall student life and like what's there to do and what are, you know, the fun things that happen on campus. Uh, so Hibba talked a little bit about Union Board and SGA, um, but do both of you want to share just like some fun stuff that goes on on campus? Maybe Hibba, you can share about some fun stuff you've done or you've planned, whether it be homecoming or, um, you know, the recent trip you've gone on. Uh, just share a little bit about, yeah, the fun things you've done on campus. Yeah, so I love shamelessly plugging these things too a little bit, but um, one of the great things about Student Government Association and Union Board is not only are you, you know, like you have a leadership position, but it is a campus recognized leadership position. So, you know, it's the students know these two organizations, the faculty and staff and administration, sorry, and administration also know these two positions. So when you're doing something so big, you're not like, you know, you're working with the students, but you're also getting so many opportunities um, because you're being recognized from admission, at, like administration admissions and all these other places. And that's the same thing with um, student ambassador too. Like, you know, you make great connections with students, but then you also make great connections with the admissions counselors and great connections with the president of the university because he knows that you're giving tours and he'll see you every time you're walking by. Um, so that's one of the awesome things. One thing that I will say um, why I kind of started with that was because through these, you know, your name is out there a little more and you get invited to so many different things. And so I was fortunate enough, I just came back from a trip um, to Washington, D.C. with the campus. Um, it was a fully play played, huh, paid paid trip um, by the campus and they took student leaders. They took people who have leadership, um, you know, aspects and leadership positions. They also took students who they know maybe they don't have like a position, but they know they're super active. Um, and that's one thing I did want to say, don't feel like you need to be the president of an organization to be involved. Just showing up to all the events that happen on campus, um, you know, gets your face and your name out there. And that's also a great way of being involved, um, as long as you're just not like sitting in your room all day and doing that. So all of us went to about 20 of us went to DC, we got to explore the um, Smithsonian's the we went to the African American History and Culture Museum, which was an awesome experience. 
um, the purpose of the trip was to bring back a different lens to our campus, right? So learn history, look at it through your lens, but then also communicate with people who have different lenses and bring that bigger conversation back to campus um, about diversity, equity, and inclusion, about what we want to see on campus, how we want to grow, um, the facts that we learned as kids versus facts now, just all those amazing things that you learn going to these amazing, like, monumental places. Um, so it was an awesome trip. The weather was horrible at the last day, but it was all worth it because um, it was my first time in DC. I went with people who, you know, are telling stories about themselves. They're talking about like, this campus is, is has diversity and people have so many different lenses that they're talking about and talking from. And so um, that was an awesome trip that like, I'm excited to bring more to campus after coming back. Um, on the fun side of things, a little more of like the things that you'll see day to day from a union board point of view, I'll say that we like to put on events every month. Um, we try to, this year we're trying every week, it is our 150th. So we're kind of going bigger than better. Um, so, some things that you'll see, maybe you'll see a, this is my favorite one, um, you'll see indoor bumper cars in the Founders Lounge, which is like our big little Founders Lounge where everyone kind of hangs out. We clear everything out and we put indoor bumper cars and you can like go on it, like it's there for like three hours of the day so you can go in between class do a quick game sometimes we have giveaways um so these are like the smaller things that you can quickly grab and go and just like hang out for a little bit in between homework if you have time in between class go pay, play a game just earlier today we had um tarot card reader, readers so psychics come in um their lines were huge and there's always free food at all of these things so You'll never miss something small on campus. The bigger side of an everyday thing, um, like you heard homecoming. Homecoming is planned by um, the homecoming chair on union board. So you'll see that the whole week of homecoming is student planned, which is an awesome experience. If you are interested in event planning, no ideas or just wanna be part of that bigger plan of homecoming, um, definitely come to union board and you can plan the whole thing. Ashley, our homecoming chair last year, killed it this year with all the things that she brought to campus. She brought Ferris wheel, she brought like a bunch of games, she brought, um, what else did she bring? I brought a roller ring in the beginning of the year. I was very proud of that, so I'm gonna plug it a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, so those are the kind of things that you'll see. We did hay rides last Friday. So we had a truck going around the entire campus. So we had like a little pumpkin pop-up. Um, it follows a theme. The other chairs that you'll see from Union Board, we do have destinations. So early October, we took about 50 students downtown Chicago on a boat trip. Um, so we went out to Navy Pier. We went on the boat. It was a paid dinner all free. Um, everything is always free to students. So students will always have these activities available to them, open to them, these giveaways open to them with no extra costs. Um, we've hit, we are planning taking people to a Bulls game and we've done that in the past. Uh, what else? We plan St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is a huge Elmhurst community thing, but student-based led with the activities. So you'll see that. You guys should definitely follow Instagram because we love our PR too. We love to show off all the fun events on campus. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the day-to-day -day life on like programming and like what you see while you're walking in between classes. Sorry, I took up a lot of time. Okay, we appreciate appreciate your insight. Um, but I do want to just kind of open it up here since we do have a few more minutes left uh, to any questions or comments about clubs, activities, maybe clubs you all are in right now that you're interested in continuing at Elmhurst uh, or any questions for Josh or Hibbo. You can drop them in the chat or you can unmute whatever you are comfortable with. Looks like we got a question here. Um, Josh, I want to go asking, first. Yeah, Josh, why don't you go ahead and share uh, 
what For made sure. you choose Elmhurst? Yeah. So what made me choose Elmhurst was ultimately the size and the personability of campus. Every time you walk out of your dorm, anywhere you see, you'll see a familiar face. Someone, someone will always say hi to you. You chat, you chit chat. It's really nice. Everyone knows everyone. It's a great campus. And it's also a beautiful campus. We're a level two arboretum. So we're very much within nature. And what I love about it is we are like, we look like an actual college campus. We are an actual college. We're a university, but it has like the cool separate building feel in a suburb. So it's really nice. You don't have to go all the way two hours away from your parents. You can just be like an hour away or 30 minutes, which is super nice. So location and the people there, everyone was super welcoming, super nice from my counselor to the student ambassador who gave me a tour. Everyone was really nice. Thank you. Yeah, Hiba, do you wanna share? Um, it's kind of honestly the same. And with the smaller size, I saw a bigger opportunity um, in getting involved, you know? I also, um, from the academic point of view, I thought I wanted a big school. I visited a big school and it was like horrible. I was like, oh my God, nobody cares. Nobody cares what I wanna do with my life. Nobody's guiding me. And then I visited here and like, you just like see how much guidance, but also like support you have, like you're, you have the capability of being independent and planning your own future, but you have so much support and so much like genuine support. It's not just, oh, I'm your advisor. So let me just tell you what to take. It's okay. Well, what do you want to do? So um, they really ask you these questions and make you really think about how you want to spend your four years here and like guide you in a direction that keeps you happy, but also successful at the end of the day. Um, cause people have that misconception that, oh, it's a small school. It's going to be so boring and stuff. Um, I've personally not seen any other school do hay rides and indoor bumper cars, but, and still have like an awesome graduation rate, but I'm just saying, you know, like there's so much room for creativity plus academic success. And you have like the best support that you'll ever find here and that's what I saw when I got here and what I noticed and it's you can tell just because no matter how many times you visit here if you have gotten a tour from an ambassador or met with a counselor we will probably most likely remember you because that's just the Elmhurst community and so um even if you don't remember us we'll be like oh my god I gave that girl a tour once and um, then she'll look at me like I'm crazy and I'll be like okay well I remember but it's okay so so that's I just love that community building aspect but yeah yeah I mean me too you know that's that's kind of the big reason why I chose Elmhurst you know I felt like an individual not just a number um and the family atmosphere, man, like it's real, like it's a real thing, you know, like I genuinely care about these two. And like, we have built a relationship together as students and now we work together. Um, and just like the support that they have in all areas of their life, you know, the support that I had as a student, now as a staff member, like I felt like everyone cared about me from the teacher in my class to my academic advisor to the janitor in my residence hall to the cafeteria worker. Like everybody was just so nice and genuine and sincere. Uh, and I feel like I could truly be myself, you know, and uh, the opportunities to create your own experience, they're just endless, you know, and their relationships are, are lifelong. So um, yeah, yeah, that's why I chose. Uh, but I want to get this other question in uh, from Adeline. Are all the clubs free to join or is there a fee? So yeah, I feel like you two would be best for this question. I'm going to speak from like, okay, like I feel like this is kind of tricky to answer because general clubs, like if you want to join SGA, union board, a uh, cultural organization, or like, you know, ping pong thing or software or entertainment or anything like that, those are all free. Um, you can just sign up, go to their meeting. I know that honor societies and Greek life take dues. So yeah, that's so, why I didn't answer that fully. Yes, because Josh will talk about that. Yeah. So like Hiba said, clubs, general clubs, you don't need to pay dues. It's, it's free. Um, Greek life, we all do have dues. So it depends on the fraternity and sorority. Um, the great thing about it is we have scholarships. I know my fraternity, we have a scholarship, multiple scholarships. There's payment plans. And then I know for honor societies and other organizations where there might be competitions, I know uh, American Marketing Association is not an honor society nor Greek life, but they do have dues. So um, 
But the great thing about it is we have so many resources where, you know, they could help you out if you really want to join. There's financing options, there's payment plans. It's nothing where it's going to break the bank. It's ultimately to support organizations. So for example, for Greek life, um, I know for most sororities and fraternities, all our things are inclusive. So once you pay your dues, you don't have to pay for t-shirts, dinner, food, initiation, badges, pins, clothing, formals, all of that is included. All of that is covered and that's how it is for most organizations. And I assume that's how it is for honor societies and other clubs that do have dues. But yeah, it's nothing insane. It's just something to help support um, our organizations. I just joined an honor society. So I will say my dues cover a whole bunch of resources and teacher stuff. And I've been like on teachers pay teachers like every day, even though I'm not even a real teacher yet, but hey, it's okay. Um, I'm living and learning. And then also um, if there is like a small fee for like, you know, like I think you said American marketing or something like that. Um, and that's ever like a barrier from you you can always talk to that advisor. Like, so like Josh said, like fee, like fees for clubs, it, it's not meant to like, you know, be a monthly thing or like, oh, you have to pay us to like, you know, have fun. No, um, always talk to the advisor or the president of that organization and they will work with you for anything, any kind of barrier, any type of like situation that occurs. So, yeah. Very well said, thank you both. Um, any other last minute questions before we wrap up here? From anyone? Okay, cool. Well, I do want to be, be respectful of your time and just want to say thank you for joining us tonight for uh, the Getting to Know EU uh, webinar series. Uh, thank you to our special guests. Big shout out to Hibba and Josh uh, for making tonight possible. But uh, this is continuing on. We have more webinars coming up. Uh, so check out our, um, our website to learn about all the different webinars we have. I think we are going to be talking about the Learning Center um, with me in two weeks. We also have uh, a virtual open house this Saturday. So if you're interested, go on our website and uh, register for the virtual open house. It's a great way that you can learn about Elmhurst and faculty members and uh, get to meet with a lot of people. Uh, from the comfort of your home. And I might be dressed as a sunflower. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So that's all we have for you. But um, thank you all and have a great rest of your evening. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Getting to Know EU webinar series.